Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Yame Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Yoranai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Greta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elde et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, Ibaslian Kurios, Otios, Opanta Kreta. Baslios, Baslian Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christonis and Ton Kurion. Kurion, Nimahagion Panta Kreta. Gadol Gadol Gibra Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gibra Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ilayla e shalut, Yehovah malak, Yehovah malak, olam olam ad. Yehovah elahenu, Yehovah ekad, gadol gadol, geburra. Zaan logan ogar tautios, dulas, desmias, despotes, dikayasune in Isus Christos. Kurion, 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 hagion, 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 numa, Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogae of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God read and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. To walk in the lamp and in the light of the commandments of the word of Lord God. Proverbs 6.23 emphasizes for us, The commandment is a lamp and the law is light and the reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So here we need to understand the lamp and the light as his commandments teaches to us, saying that the statutes or the, or the mitzvah commandments of the Lord are always yasher, rejoicing the heart. And the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. In Psalms 119 verses 98 through 100, Thou through the commandments hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for the testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. And the famous verse, as we know in Psalms 119, in the noon file of 105th verse, The word is a lamp unto my feet, 
and a light unto my path. Again, the same word, lamp and light. Lamp ne air, light or. In Isaiah 8, he emphasizes the real purpose of the ministry. As we look over here in Isaiah chapter 8, in verse number 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, because there is no light in them. The word light over here, dear brethren, it emphasizes that there is no wall of fortification to have the thought process to be renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God. Therefore, what does he say? He says, bind up this testimony. So make this testimony to be among the standards of your disciples. So these disciples should have a testimony saying that they have the lamp and the light of the word of Lord God. And in Second Peter 1.19 he said, We have also a sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well if you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in the dark places, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Such sort of a great light which has been given for us. Therefore, he says in Revelation 2, 5, Remember therefore from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove the candlestick out of this place except you repent. So dear brethren, we shall look what is this lamp and what is this light? Because these both are very, very essential and the reproof which are the instructions for the way of life. We shall actually need to learn a lot many things over here. As such, many of the people are not able to realize the difference between the lamp and the light. So we shall continue after this prayer. So sanctify yourselves to look upon the unique pale wonders of the great word of Lord our God, which he has prepared and kept for us on today's date in a twenty past to really learn and to become the pale wonders of his glory. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the truth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in a treaty past to the praise of your glory, so that in each and everything, O Lord, it could be your goal, your will, and not our thought at all. So, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So, the first thing over here, what we find the commandment is a lamp. The Hebrew word lamp is called to be ne'er. And the pictographical representation for this word ne'er is very, very important. It is nothing but it says, for a man should have a solid base or that which can give him a solid structure to defend anything. For example, you have the sayings of man versus the words of God. So which one you trust? So we trust the words of God rather than the sayings of man. So here we have this word, you know, lamp. The sayings of man are not trustable. What we need to get back? We need to get back to them, to the word of God. That's what we find over there in the book of Jeremiah as well. When he says in chapter 23, verses 18 through 22, what is the ultimate purpose? Get them to learn the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. Colossians 1, 24 through 29. Lead them to know the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. So that's the point what we have. Every time whenever we come, we should be the standards of his word in such a manner that we are actually becoming the word of God to these people. So that is called to be the lamp, a solid base. So you can have that vigor and valor to be completely built upon a solid base. 
We are not depending upon the sayings of man, but we are lo really looking upon the words of God. So these words of God are called to be the lamp. So your vigor and valor as a solid base. Your vigor and valor, which has been very much essential to be as a solid base. So that's what we have over here, dear brother, and solid base. That's the lamp for a man to have his strength, for a man to really defend in this world. The teachings of men, we have not been taught the fear of God. The precepts of men, we have not been taught the fear of God. Therefore, in Matthew he said, They come to worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. The fear towards me have been taught as per the precepts of men. The same thing even if you could find in the book of Mark. He says, the traditions of men. So these precepts of men have become more than the precepts or the instructions of Lord God. The reasons why we are able to find, saying that the precepts of men or the, or the traditions of men are more because they are not able to find that vigor or that lamp which has to be. You know, when you find these precepts of men are called to be the traditions of men, they don't give you that solid base of strength. Here, the word ne'er in the pictographical representation, it emphasizes to have that vigor and valor in your ability. How to illustrate this? For example, that during the time of pregnancy or the way that has been called for making up, cracking the egg, the sperm should have that caliber out of that 3, 000, 3 million or 5 million sperms which have been ejaculated, one which is quite capable will fertilize the egg and form the zygote. So now, if you could go to your checkup, doctors would say, your sperms are having weakened, they're not having proper growth, they're not having that mobility to go along. So what they say, we need to give you or rise your potential by taking some medication or by taking this or taking that. So what they want to do ultimately, they want to make up the standards of your sperm to be absolutely having that vigor or that ability to pass through that and to become, to fertilize that vovum or egg. So here you can understand what is the meaning of that which the word lamp actually meant to say in the word ne'er of the pictographical representation of this word Hebrew. You know that ability to pull down every false things or the imaginations of men. That sperm which has or that word of God, that thought which is driving in your brain. It has such an ability to say that you withstand against anything that goes against the knowledge of God and you at only believe the word of God to be number one priority. That's the point. So that's what you need to have, such ability, such great strength, which has not been found today in our pulpits among these men. The great strength, the great ability, the great vigor. Such ability has been gone. You know why? They don't have faith. In the life of Peter and Christ our Lord of God, when Peter want to go against that boisterous wind and walk on the water, Lord God the Father teaches to us the lesson, why have you doubted? You know, that's not having that ability. And today, not even the pastors are having that ability. 
to say once again, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God. Once again, we shall make each and every believer to be perfect and complete in the entire counsel of Lord God. They're not able to find this ability. The reason why they don't have this ability is that they themselves don't have that absolute confidence in the word of Lord God in simple terms. They don't have that lamp in them. If Christ our Lord of our God be with us, then who can be against us? They may court. But they're not able to realize they have been numbered in the chariots of God. How they can enter into that numbering of the chariots of God? When you're passing the test, every day you have a test, every breath you have a test, every second you have a test. Whether are you coming to serve Lord God with all of your heart, soul and mind? Are you coming to be like a compulsory duty? having grudging in your heart? Are you coming with your obligation to Lord God, to serve Him in spirit and in truth? Are you coming to realize the purpose of your life is nothing but to serve Christ and coming ahead in doing the will of Lord God the Father, no matter what it may cost in life? So your attitude, your viewpoint, every second, every breath will be examined. It will be taken a note on that. How did you serve Christ? Was it as per the demands of the word of Lord God? Or you came by grudging? You came to show off? Or you really had a great thirst to dig and take maximum wealth from the knowledge of Bible doctrine? Whether you had that or you were just making a pass of time. So everything, that's why your vigor and valor will be counted. That's why your strength on such how you have developed will be, will be noted. So the strength which you have been taken should be to say, just don't say there are still four months for the harvest. But Lord God the Father said, Open up your eyes, lift up your head and look. The harvest is already wide, but the laborers are really becoming slumber or slumber. You're not becoming the will of God the Father. So that's the point over here, dear brethren. Your real strength, what it is. Why can't you have a strength to fulfill the will of God the Father, though Christ our Lord our God has given to you this great strength? You know, this Greek word power, which has been used to translate for iskon, is very, very important in the epistles of pa in the epistles of Apostle Paul, particularly in this mystery doctrine of the church age, when he gives these words, these are very, very essential. He said, first, the word which goes on to operate in you. In Ephesians 1, 19, in that great prayer which he prays for us, that our spiritual eyes to be enlightened to look upon this high holy heavenly calling in the church age. So he says, dear brethren, first in verse number 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, that is the power for us, and revolution in the knowledge of him. The word revolution meant to say, Apocalypsis, which is to make everything to be clear, or to use our words, to make everything to be naked. Naked truth, the Greek word gala. You're really not having the naked truth in the pulpits being taught by your so-called pastors. You're not having iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, the word of Ladga, to be taken from the original Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic. You are teaching them the covered truth in your translations. 
But here he wants us to have, if you have the Spirit of Lord God, the Holy One, indwelling in you, controlling in you, or leading you to say that you are having the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in your life, then you should have the ministry called Apocalypti. Making clear, making bare, making naked the real disclosure of truth through repeated instructions. Till you could be mindful about the things after you die, till you could be mindful about the life after you go to heaven. Or in the, mid, or in the meantime, whether will you be aborted? You know, it's not just the point to say that the kid got conceived and you're just happy that now the birth will be. No, you should take proper care till the ninth month. Sometimes there will be abortions even in the seventh month. So here you can learn. When you have been taken that great vigor and valor with the repeated instructions to be inculcated from the book of Genesis 1-1 till to the book of Revelation 20-21, Speedily learn the word of Lord God. Time is short. Satan doesn't want you to enjoy the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. And the ultimate purpose of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is to teach to you the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. And make each and every believer to be perfect and complete in all wisdom. That's the ultimate purpose of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, residing in you. He guideth and leadeth you into all truth so that you can become the truth and manifest the truth. You know, that's what Christ, our Lord of God, asks in Matthew chapter 22, or 22 in verse number 13. We should understand this word. It has to be in verse number 16. Tell us, therefore, what thinketh you? It is lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? And Jesus said, Pursuing their wickedness, why tempt you, you hypocrites? And then he uses the word, which is very, very important. He says in verse 19, Show me. You know, the point over here, the word show. Epidiknume. It meant to say, exhibit, manifest. That's what every believer has to be now, manifesting the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but to teach the entire counsel of the word of Lord God to the perishing souls. When you are becoming like a grammatius, when you are growing up to become the next level of thinking called to be the Caribbean standards, you have to go to that standards which is something far high. You have to reach the standards of the thinking of Christ confirmed in you. That's the real manifestation of the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that manifestation, how it has to be, he says in Ephesians 1, saying that, Apocalypti revolution. That's how Lord God, the Holy Spirit, teaches to us. Making the truth to be absolutely clear, no doubt. And when you have the truth to be absolutely inculcated in your mind, soul and spirit by understanding the concept, that makes you to have that vigor to overcome any thought that goes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The concepts are not clear. You don't have absolute confidence to believe them. The designs are not clear. You don't realize the importance of this word of God. That's how it happens, dear brother. And when you're not having the concepts to be absolutely clear, you can never understand the importance. What an impact you have in exegesis. What an impact you have in isagogics. What an impact you have in each and every categorical exposition of the truth. What an impact you have in isagogical, categorical Iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, exposition of the word of God. You don't realize them, how powerful they ought to be, how powerful they are. What an impact you have. 
But the problem with these people is that they don't realize at all what an impact it can stand for. Therefore, he says, the revolution, when you have been concept clear, when you have been able to realize the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you are able to understand the transformation of your life only in the truth, to exhibit nothing but the standards of the truth, to realize and to learn nothing but the standards of this word of Lord God, if you have that concept to be absolutely clear, you really don't understand your brethren what an impact you can find or a source of energy you can find. Foolishly, you are running behind your physical food, your physical diet and everything else to maintain your health and to say that you are really fit and fine, you are real fools. The real source of power is the word of God that drives your head, that will become the lamp. And the real strength, you know, having that ability in your sperm to crack out that egg, like that you are now here to crack out every thought that goes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine and tell them, this is the source, this is the key, this is the origin. And where you find origin in this world, only the word of Lord God, people are running behind the vague reasons. People are thinking that this could be the origin of man or a single cell which has been nutted to form a molecular structure like man. And people are listening such sheer words. They don't come back and confess that Lord God made man out of his own breath of his nostrils being spread the breath of lives. They don't understand that man, man comes from the earth. Till there was not the deluge or the flood, till that time, man would have been only to eat the things pertaining to the vegetable life. After the flood, he was been allowed to eat the flesh. If not, there was not a original plan by Lord God to eat non-veg. Or to be carnivorous or whatsoever the word you can use. So when God made man out of the dust, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of lives. And he knows that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word which cometh from the mouth of Lord God. Therefore, the real source for man to find the strength, it is not in the realm of the diet or the food or any other stupid things which he can replace. The real source of the food for him, if ever you have to be very much strong, fasting and praying which the disciples couldn't run out or make that demon of dumb and deaf to move from the boy which the father comes to say and request to the fa to, to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, such sort of demon can go only by fasting and praying. You know, that's the real strength. But today you are able to find ministers coming to the church, not even able to fast, at least like the three days, what Apostle Paul, without food and water. He was a chosen vessel of Lord God, already being prepared under the feet of Gamaliel. Now he's going to translate the things pertaining to the Old Testament into something new of a new revolution of his epistles. And he's giving that marvelous, rep marvelous revolution in this power of his word, particularly in Ephesians, in one what we are reading now, to say the power of the Spirit, which is nothing but to make everything crystal clear, like naked. Apocalypti, the word, to make everything to be crystal clear. That's what the right ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is all about. When you have your concept clear, you can draw your source. You believe that firmly. But foolishly, the people, they have come up to make the doctrinal denominational standards. They come back to make up their tenets. But they don't realize the ultimate view of Lord God the Father is to make each and every believer to conform to the image of Christ and to fill the earth, now what we call this body, with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's how the earth shall be filled with the glory of God of Isaiah 6. Anything which the devil could touch, it cannot become the glory. 
how it would be now the glory of Lord God the Father when you as a believer take in the word of Lord God every day and translate even the single iota and carrera from the Bible into your soul and manifest to become what has been exactly demanded in the word of Lord God, that's how you become the real word of God to these people. And that's what you have been called. And that's how you will be filling with the, the earth with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's why you have been given this power. You know, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, did not indwell earlier in the Old Testament. It was the ministry of endowment only on certain few. Less than 2% of the entire population of the Old Testament could find this privilege of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They included the prophets, the kings, the workers in the temple. And after the work has been finished, they were left useless. But when you come back to the New Testament, it is not so. Your, your life itself, to recognize that you belong to Christ or you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a disciple believer, that should be more specific. He seals you till the day of redemption by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then if you have been there abiding in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then the ministry now is to enlighten you, to shed light, upon the word of Lord God and to make every believer to understand the will of Lord God into that power of revolution which has been given for you so that you can manifest in the exousia authority what is the Kratos strength, what is the Iskun strength, what is that great dunamis power of the world so that you can be fearless in conquering your enemy. You know, therefore, Apostle Paul, he says a very beautiful word in Second Corinthians. We are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. You know, when you can tell that word, a man who has reached the rank of Mahanium blessings, a 20 years of experience of his life, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 20 years of his time, you as believers to spend 20 years of your time into the meditation of the word of Lord God. As disciples to grammatias, from grammatias to cherubim level of thinking, from cherubim level of thinking to the next level, called to be the standards, as the word of Lord God says, conforming to the image of Christ. That's what your next level and now as a cherubim level of thinking, the word carose meant to say like a scribe, you still now diligently dig. Diligently you take each and every word, you examine it crucially. And you make it up to be your base. To reach that you may take 20 years. Yes, you may. Like a scribe to finish the Bible to write. Four times it requires that time. So that you can be well equipped, thoroughly furnished. And such is the one who is going to manifest the great power of the word of Lord God. And then he can say, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan, the strategies of Satan, the tactics of Satan, or the methodologies, modus vivendi or modus operandi of Satan. The ultimate work of Satan is to make the believers not to become at least waxed in his soul like Lot, and to make the pastor teachers not to become the preacher of righteousness. The believers shall not be like Lot. That's what we find in Second Peter chapter two. His soul was waxed by the ungodly deeds of those people. Believers are not having that now. Where is your vexation of your soul? <laughs> If you would look upon the vexation of your soul, the present Christendom has fallen to such standards of culprit teaching or culprit practices. Really, it pricks our heart to know why at least this man they have become the preachers and they're not able to realize what a great terrible judgment it awaited for them. 
In Jeremiah 8 itself, he said, Your wives will be sent to other men if you're not able to find in the word of Lord God accurately. And we can find that in our pulpit. Your children will be killed before your eyes. We're able to find that before our own eyes in our pulpit. The bad, but then to men, the men are not able to change. You know why? To what extent this men they have been fallen? <laughs> Just to feed their belly. Just for the survival. They're coming to the church. They're not coming to serve the purpose of Lord God in making disciples of all the nations. They're coming to survive for their own belly. For some pieces of barley or for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. You know, that's why these people, what they do. Why you should be baptized, if you could raise this question. The reason of your baptism, what it is. And the very short and sweet answer will be from the congregation, if you would ever look. For marriage. Because they demand that the other bride or the bridegroom should be baptized. So they love to say, approaching before one week of the marriage, that we should be baptized. And they want to take the baptism classes and they want to be baptized. That's not the Bible says the reason why we need to be baptized. Because the pastors are baptizing them because they're having a marriage license for them as a pastor and they come on to baptize. You know why? Because they can get some money for, from that marriage. So they baptize both boy and girl and they want to get married. Really the entire essence of the word baptizo is lost. We don't consider baptism is a martyrdom to the Lord. To be a witness for Christ. The great witness what it has to be through our lives. The Greek haploids after taking a thorough training. Keep a pool in a small or big vessel. The pool with filled with the blood of pigs. And they have a weapon now, either it may be arrow or sword, or it may be a javelin. So now the word baptism for them is nothing but baptizo. They now dip that sword or the tip of the javelin into that blood. And they come and stand over here and they say now, earlier this sword or this javelin couldn't have any purpose of life, but now it has seen the blood. Even I am now ready to die for my country, to save my country. This is the work of actually the word baptizo in Greek haploids. And now they're ready to protect their country no matter what. So they're ready to die like a martyr to the Lord God. That's the real meaning of baptizo. But these people today of the baptizing... They have changed the concept to say, for marriage you get baptized. And who are supporting this? The people who are being there as the pastors to your church, reverence to your church. If you would look upon in Matthew chapter 28 in verse number 20, in verse number 19 he said, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to absorb all things whatsoever I have commanded you. How? When should be the baptism? They wouldn't get baptized, the Greek haploids, before the training. They train him rigorously for 18 years if needed. You don't even have one year of training to be called Christians or true Christians or disciple oriented Christians in the church age and you say one week before take some baptism classes and make them to be as if they could become holy enough to the marriage and consecrate the marriage and get money to your account no oh dear brother the fierce anger of the Lord God the way he did not spare, even Moses, he said, 
You will not enter into the land flowing with milk and honey. You would just look. The incident he refers back second time. When the rock should get the water, he hit twice. And there he said, however, to honor you, I might have given the water. But there you dishonored my word by not having the proper lamp or ability to speak to the rock. Therefore he says to him in very, very clear terms, You have not respected my word, honored my word, obeyed my word. Therefore you shall not enter the land flowing with milk and honey. Tomorrow people may think we are baptizing, we are making them to be the disciples, we are making them to be converts or the things whatsoever, the radical movements these people that try to do in our own light. You need to pay an answer to the Lord God tomorrow because of you. <laughs> In this great verse of Lamentations, chapter 4, in verse number 13, For the sins of a prophet and the iniquities of a priest, they have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. And what is the word over there? The sins of the prophets. The same thing in Lamentations 2.14, The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They have not discovered, they have not made a gala exposition, they have not made to look your life to be a disciple. You know, that's the great thing which has been happening in our pulpits, that they have not able to discover. The word discover here, gala, once again, they are not operating in the ministry of apocalypti, revolution of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to make the things to be absolutely naked, to make the things to be absolutely clear. They are not operating in these terms. That's what he said over here. They have not discovered what? Your iniquity. And what is that iniquity? Distorted thinking to be far away from discipleship program. Therefore, what they end up? They end up to teach you vain things. They end up to cook you up with foolish things. Shedding of the innocent blood. The ultimate reason why God the Father appoints the pastor teacher to the church is to train them up to become at least the preacher of righteousness in inculcating the entire council of Bible doctrine, fulfilling Colossians 1, 24 through 29. But these people don't even understand why they should be a pastor teacher for you. They think they should be a pastor for marrying them. They should be a pastor for burying them. If ever when it has been needed to pat on their backs and to stay and to say that, don't worry, pastor is behind you because you have given him some money, monthly tithe, or you have given him some money of offerings to him, so he's been taking care of you because he's like the way you just bribe him and he goes and gives that bribe to the Lord God in heaven so that now Lord God can pour blessings upon you like Balaam, you know, the ministry is running today. But for Daniel, when the offer was been given, you will be clothed with purple, put a neck, put a ring, put a chain to your neck. You will become the third of the prime minister. <laughs> he said, let your gifts be with you. When ceremony comes and asks to Peter, give me that gift, what do you have? Let your money perish with you. You thought you can purchase this gift by money. So people are thinking they can have this bribe with the Lord God and they can do their affairs with the Lord God with that bribe. The bona fide gift of the pastor teacher cannot be purchased, cannot be earned. It comes with ability, it comes with authority, it comes with proper preparation, thorough preparation. Not that your father was a pastor, so you can become a pastor. It comes as a bona fide gift. And that's what people don't understand today. They think the father is a pastor, so automatically the son also will become a pastor because there are so many churches so that they can be fed upon. And you can just tell whether they've really been or not because they're fed upon in such a manner by looking upon their bellies itself, you can say these are not pastors at all. 
They don't love to fast, neither they fast. And they say, having the face of a facade in such a manner that they are fasting. And why they don't discover your iniquity? They themselves are in iniquity. Blind cannot lead the blind. Both of them will end up in the ditch. So when they are not able to discover iniquity, what happens? Then quite obviously you will find yourself ending up in iniquity. So dear brethren, the ultimate purpose of our life, if it is not to make the congregation to discover the reasons why you have to be baptized, the reasons to discover them and to tell why you don't have that vigor and valor, why you don't have that real uh, luxurious life in Christ, well-established peace life in Christ, prosperity life in Christ, because you're not having the proper relationship with Christ. Why are you not aware about that? Why are you not able to look upon that? And that's all it happens. Every time, as we read that in Lamentations 4.13, innocent blood is being shed. It hasn't been shed by the traffic negligence of the persons who are driving. It has been shed by the negligence of the so-called past teachers in making you to discover your sin. In making you to discover your iniquity, they have failed. They have failed to such an extent that today we can look, the churches are not disciple orientation. They think that if they can have a prayer altar in their home, they can alter their family. And they think that prayer altar is enough. Stupid, idiotic morons. Every day you should carry your cross, come to the church, then only a worthy of his discipleship program. The pastor teacher should be well prepared to teach to you the word of Lord God so that he can first put you that lamp, that vigor in your thoughts, the driving force, Though the men may say it is not possible, Lord God the Father says in Luke 1, 34 and 37, the Remata Declaration of Bible Doctrine, with it alone all things are possible. The Remata Declaration, what it is, day by day inculcation of the past teacher in teaching you, in giving you the entire essence of the Word of Lord God from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. You know, you have modified the name of teaching shepherds into past teachers, your translations, and from there on you have made him to be pastor, and from pastor you have now recognized your own constitution laws to say we will keep him to be reverend how could you could be reverend when the real bona fide title or the gift given to man to male believers not to female what it is to be past teachers or teaching shepherds because you know why why not for a female because they have their menses sickness and the word of Lord God shall not be stopped even for a single day whether it may rain or shine whether you may be in a good health or a weak health Every day you have to come and teach. And in the time of the monthly menses of a woman, she cannot touch that holy thing by her unholy or by, by her by, by her menstrual sickness. And that's what we can look. She has to be kept cleansed. But she has been given the permission to preach in authority towards the children, towards the older woman, towards the younger woman, not to have authority over the men. Therefore, the real responsibility for a woman comes in a family that she has to train the children according to the law. You really have a great responsibility with great, great patience to teach your children.
But when it comes to the inculcation of Bible doctrine, not just your prayer altars will be in your family, but where your crosses. Every day you need to carry your cross. Every day, every day, every day. And inculcate them. Let them know the discovery of their sins. The discovery that their hearts have not been designed to look upon the valuable word of Lord God. The discipleship program of Lord God. Whom you shall fear, the Lord or man. That's what we have been giving you, the vigor and valor of lamp, what it is. Not the teachings of men, the precepts of men, but the teachings of Bible doctrine thoroughly. This will be the real vigor for you. And that vigor can make you to overcome any trial, any fear. Because you have been oriented, though you can say the same verse of Psalms 23, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. You know why? Because you have the preservation work of Lord God the Father. The same thing in Nineveh's case or Tarshish's case when Jonah was going. He says to those captains, put me in the water, but they're fearing. But he says, put me in the water because he knows the preservation of Lord God because he has to do the work of Lord God. But today, much of the people in the present Christendom are not able to look what is exactly the work of Lord God. They're completely out of the will of Lord God. You know why? Because they are not able to discover the iniquity. If you discover the iniquity, they turn away captivity. But they're seeing for you false burdens and they're causing you banishments. Your every thought process is not according to the word of Lord God, so that it becomes now worthless. He says, you have become worthless. That's very simple, dear brethren. They're becoming worthless for you. They become banished. So what they're looking, he says, they're causing you to look false burdens, which are going to become desolate. And the word burden is called, dear brethren, Maset. And what is that Maset? Your vigor and valor has been destroyed by rising up some of the things which are not able to hold. You know how to illustrate this? In uh, Second Peter we have these verses for us to learn. He says particularly beginning with verse number 11. Being twelve, being natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speaking evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the rewards of righteousness, as they that count it pleasure to draw it in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer who loved the wages of unrighteousness you know donkey rebukes the same thing these people they're trying to do. These are wells without waters, clouds that have been carried away with the tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. The mist of darkness is reserved forever. The word meant to say Zophos. The darkness, the blackness, which has been used for the hell, netherworld. You know why these people are in such a manner? They're trying to build up your life with a great refuge, they say, but in return they are destroying your complete structure of true spirituality in the Lord. They speak with great swelling words, but what the words they are, the words of vanity. They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through vanitonness. Those that are clean escaped from them who live in error. They promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same he is bought in bondage. You know, therefore he says in verse 20, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, have knowledge, again the word Ginesco, to get acquainted with the full epinosis knowledge, knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The later end of them is worse. 
Therefore, they say they're pastors. Therefore, they say everything. But they become entangled therein again. Why? Because their later end is worse. For it have been better for them not to have known the ways of righteousness than after they have known to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. What are the holy commandments which have been given for them? To teach the word of Lord God. Make them to come and take up your cross every day, not your prayer altars. But where is your cross? Make them to be disciples. Make them to learn the word of Lord God. And they're turning away from that, turning away from the holy commandment which is delivered unto them. Therefore he compares them to a dog that which goes on to eat its own vomit and to that pig which goes on to go into its own rolling of life in that same dirt or dung, wallowing in the mires. If you could look upon so-called prophets or the pastors, what we can look in Lamentations 2 in verse number 14, who haven't discovered your sin. Therefore, there is no strength in you, no vigor in you, no valor in you. Where is your strength? Where is your vigor? Where is your valor? You can say you can find a strength and vigor and valor in such and such things. No, dear brother, you don't have any strength or vigor and valor at all. It is lost. Because you haven't discovered your sin. The sin of not coming to learn the word of Lord God every day. The sin of the pastor teachers not teaching the word of Lord God every day. They are not men like Noah who could be called a reckon to be the preacher of righteousness. They are not men like Loth who could have their soul waxed because of that ungodly way of life they are living. The same thing over here in this passage we find of Second Peter. He says in verse number 6 and following in chapter 2, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them, condemned them with an overthrow, making the, them as an ensample unto those that should live after ungodly. What is that irreverence towards Bible doctrine? People are negligent to take up the cross. People are having to show forth destitution towards reverential fear. Today you can find entire realm of Christianity in this category, ungodly, the destitute of showing reverential fear towards God. Therefore they condemn God, they're impious. If not, they would really make them to follow the cross. It would really make them to carry the cross, not just to keep your prayer altars at your home. Every day you should come to assemble the word of Lord God. In the time of Corona, the way how you used to run your Zoom apps, get back to teach every day the word of Lord God, whether they hear or phobia, but you are answerable to Lord God the Father, whether you have taught them right doctrine or not. God the Father is going to ask you, not them. Have you blown the trumpet? That's what Ezekiel 3 and 4 teaches to us. Have you blown the trumpet? Have you taught the entire counsel of the word of Lord God so that you can be pure from the blood which could be upon their own head? If the watchman doesn't blow the trumpet, he said, I will ask an account of you. If you blow the trumpet, then no problem. I will take account from them. Have you made a sound that could be really worthy for them? He says in Second Corinthians again, if the trumpet which has been blown, if it has not been made with a proper sound or an accurate sound, how these people will be well prepared? It has to be blown in the warning that has to be given. The same thing with us. As pastor teachers, if you have not been training them up to become disciples, how they could be well prepared. Tomorrow they will claim on you. You've enjoyed their good food. You have given them everything. They have given you their offerings. They have made this. They have made that. And tomorrow they will say, Crucify this idiot. He was not a preacher of righteousness. He did not tell what exactly was in the word of Lord God, though we were not learned. Though we were not aware about the enlightenment of the word of Lord God through the proper mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So they say in simple terms, though they might have not learned, though they might have not understood, So they will say, crucify. But that will be very late. Nether part. Darkness into the nether part. 
because they themselves set liberty they are saying but they are also to the bondage the bondage of not preaching the bondage of not becoming the word of God the vigor and valor that should reign in our pulpits today people are thinking it will be happy for us to become an evangelist an evangelist cannot preach in the church his work is to be outside of the church and they think we are just baptizing men oh dear brother The way how we take baptism for the sake of your marriage, so the Christendom has fallen to such states. It has to be esteemed and highly valued for something which it has to be very great. But we have made it up to be absolutely sure arts. We are just engaging our life in such standards of life, dear brethren, we will be ashamed of when we stand in the presence of Lord God the Father before the great men. The great men who gave their lives, for example, we cannot even compare ourselves to be like the standards of Paul or Peter. But though he says, if you if you're just following, follow after me. But at least the great men who taught the word of Lord God. Like you have men to look upon, like William Kelly, C. H. McIntosh, Charles Spurgeon. They really laid down their lives in teaching to you. But are enjoying on the labors of them. Having your Bible to be translated, the great life of William Carey. Just look his life, you'll understand how much he has done for our country, India. And what we are paying now. <laughs> Christianity has a black mark. Christianity has a blasphemy. That's what you're paying now to these people. What does Christianity become in the eyes of these people? Nothing but vanity. It has become as a Western culture, the American thought. And they think they have their knowledge to think upon, they can, uh, uh, they can, they can maintain upon their every hormonal balance or imbalance and they can be in that process of synchronization towards their health. <laughs> Dear brethren, if God the Father can mind, He can just wipe you out within the fraction of your second wherewith you can say, you can whip your eye, the eyelid. Within that He can destroy you. Just be careful with the Lord God whom you are dealing with. That's the great warning what David gives to his son Solomon at the end of his days in First Chronicles. Be careful with the Lord God whom you are dealing with. Don't make fun of it. He even knows the thoughts, the motivations, the imaginations behind that. Every day come back to give the valuable tithe of your time, not your money. Hell with your money. Because people may think we have given money to the church and the things will happen to be working out for us good and effective. No. Every day come to take up your cross. Every day become the disciple of the word of Lord God. Every day you need to pay the tithe of your time. At least if you're paying the tithe of your time, you're living accurately 10% of the Enoch way of life. From 10% of the tithe, you have to come to 100%, minimum 90%. Because the life what Enoch lived with Lord God the Father was 80%. That meant to say minimum 20 hours in a day he spent with the Lord God. And Lord God was so pleased with him. Your only companion, just imagine, baby, you love to delight yourself. Maximum time. <coughs> That's what it has to be your actual wife. But even he left that, he left the children. And he goes to spend maximum time with the word of Lord God. That pleased the Lord. 80% <coughs> of his life he walked with the Lord God. And Lord God couldn't bear, couldn't wait. You know, you have a deep love with your boyfriend or a girlfriend. And you're not able to stop now. The whole night finishing chatting with them. You're not able to wait for the day to come so that you have to just take her. That's the word elop. The Greek, the Hebrew word, Lakak. So God the Father is not able to wait on behalf of Enoch. He's just waiting and he takes him out. How? Alive. 
He had a testimony that he pleased the Lord. You know, what a great privilege to spend your time day and night in the meditation of Bible doctrine. Seven times a day to spend your time to read the word of Lord God. Such are the men God the Father is seeking. Such are the men God the Father is loving to have in affairs. You love to love a woman who is having the virtue character for Christ. Not the characters just you can pass down your journey on this earth, being the wife of such and such. The real bond, real integrity, real love. Dying like a martyr to Christ. Such a woman. That's what Enoch was to the Lord God. Every time, therefore the short revolution given for him in Jude Verses 7 through 14, or 14 and following, he says, Ungodly way of life. The same thing over here in Second Peter chapter 2. Lot, he goes on to say that the people, the way how Sodom and Gomorrah has been destroyed because they were of such ungodly life. And now he says in verse 7, and delivered just Lot, the word just meant to say Decaius, the one who has been absorbing divine laws, righteous, and vexed with the filthy conversation. You know the word vexed, kata, followed by the word ponas, intense desire he has been to exhaust. He's been vexed in his soul. How for the filthy, again the word filthy, asal gear. And this Asal Gia is being translated into unbridled lust, licentious, lusciousness, vonotoneness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolence. Any word you can take. Filthy, Asal Gia. Sodomites and Gomorrahites, till date they call for the homos. Waxed with such way of life. Just imagine, today our souls are also being waxed by the filthy, the way over here he says, conversation, the same anastrophe, asalgia anastrophe of the wicked. The word wicked over here is called to be a titomi. And what it is? The one who breaks the word of Lord God just to gratify his lust. Such a wicked one. It is not ponoras or kakia, but the word a titome. So why he has been vexed by looking upon the filthy conversation. The manner of life which is absolute filthy. The filthy conversation of life. Today also we look such sort of filthy conversation of life in the midst of the so-called pastors, so-called channel runners. It is a shame even to speak of those things, what they do. They wear a mask saying these are really the mentors, but these are hypocrites to the core. Filthy. And it's a very, very sad thing to note how these people they have been engaging their lives in such way of life. So, dear brethren, he says, such sort of asal gia way of life, be aware. Asal gia standard of life, be aware. Therefore, he said, his soul was waxed. Why? Because they were been in such sort of shameless way of life. Today also we look upon the standard of Christianity being ruled by the so-called elders of the church, by the so-called members of the church. Just waxing our soul. Sometimes we look into the lives of these unbelievers. There are at least some sort of good nature. But even they are also having their own levels to prove 
that nothing good comes. At the one end, Christians have been vexing the souls. At the other end, unbelievers are also vexing their souls. So here, the soul of righteous Lot is been vexed because of that filthy conversation. Therefore, he says, conversation meant to say, apostrophe, anastrophe, according to the behavior, the manner of life, and the conduct. And then he says, For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vaxed. Again, the word over here, basainazo. But here, when we find the word vaxed in verse number 7, it is called to be cut up on eo. That meant to say, he's been exhausted. But now in verse 8, the word vaxed meant to say, basainazo. Meant to say, to test the metals, like the way how we are going to use the silica stone, which has been used to test the purity of gold or silver. So that's the point. As the question by applying torture, you know, when there's someone they're doing wrong, he's asking them. That's the word basainazo. Therefore, he's been waxed with grievous pains. He's been harassed. He's been distressed. So he's been giving them to torment. He's asking them. In seeing and hearing them, tormenting his righteous soul. What is his soul is now? It is righteous because it is not able to look upon the perishing souls without knowing Christ. Is that your righteous soul? Hmm. Or you will say, let them perish. And let's enjoy our life. But here he says, perishing souls. So his righteous soul was waxed from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The word anomas, against the standards. And deeds is ergon, their business, their employment. Therefore, you know, he gives this great promise over here, Second Peter 2 Peter 2.9. The Lord knoweth, the word called to be oida, is acquainted with. How to deliver, again the word romai, the godly out of the temptations, out of these experiments, out of these experiences of life. And to reserve, that is what, to attend carefully the unjust adikias unto the day of judgment or crisis to be punished, to cause them to be chastised. But the godly people called to be user beyond, he knows very well how to save them or how to deliver them out of these temptations. So do you have a life like a testimony of Lot? The reasons why these people are not able to have such life because your sins are not being discovered. Your soul cannot be compared that it is a righteous one. The reasons why these people they cannot be compared to be the righteous ones because they are not able to let go the real worth for the real worth of life, the stupid things of this earth. So, dear brethren, he says over there in Proverbs chapter 6, beginning in verse number 23, as we're going to read that. The standards of these words are very, very important because the very first thing he says, the lamp. The second thing he says, the light. So that lamp which has to be enlightened, we read in Ephesians 1, the revolution of Apocalypti, and how they have to be teaching them daily the word of Lord God, training them daily in the will of Lord God. That's the word Apocalypti. Training them up every day. How? According to the epinosis knowledge, not just gnosis, but epinosis knowledge of him, so that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, again the word fortizo, to shed light. And then, that you may know, acquainted, then he says, what is the hope, the word elpis, of his calling, the word classes, many are called, few are chosen. And what are the riches, plausias, meant to say, that which is abundance of the glory, the word doxa, of the inheritance, kleronomia, of the saints called to be hagios. And then he says now, what is that exceeding greatness, hupabalo, to surpass, to exceed? That greatness of his power, the word called to be megatheos. 
And the power is dunamis, which has been given in Second Timothy chapter 1 to every believer to understand the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given the power of spirit, agape love, and the sophronismos mind. Such is the spirit given for us. The dunamis power, agape love, and sophronismos mind. So he says, what is that power? And then he goes on to say, to us, word, who believe according to the working, again, energia, efficiency, that which is to be used only in the New Testament for superhuman power. That's what it is now. Every believer has this energia like a superhuman power. In the New Testament, when it has been used the word energia, it has been called to be like the superhuman power. You cannot be being locked now or kept behind now for thinking upon that you don't have the superhuman power in you. Now long back in National Geographic Channel, there was a series called To Be Superhumans. You can just type it that in your Google or you can search it out in your YouTube. This man goes to cover how these people can be superhuman. And he tells these other powers what they develop, what they inculcate. <laughs> but with the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, we have been called for this word energia. Every believer has been equipped with that superhuman power. And you know what is the meaning of that superhuman power? Dear brethren, Go and make disciples of all the nations. Nothing can stop you. That's the power of your lamp. That's the power of your light. Nothing can stop you in inculcating the word of Lord God. For example, the martyrdom of Graham Staines. His wife, no one can stop her. She went along to survive in the same place. And she did the work. Receiving a great award event from my country, India, Padma Shri. Out of 3,200, she is one among them, having that reward. That's the witness of a superhuman power. And that superhuman power, as per the New Testament, energia is being given to every believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who have this burden. The burden of growing up into grammar tears. The burden of going and making disciples of all the nations. They have this power. Such a superhuman power, they have it. And it's by default for everyone in Christ. And that power which has been not properly used... You know, it's as good as to say to small children, the way how we're going to train them up to learn the sophisticated weaponry. It's difficult to teach. You should become an adult man. Therefore, he says in Hebrews 5, strong meat belongeth to them that they're grown up. But that they are still drinking milk. They cannot handle the word of God, the righteous word of God. So the superhuman power... If you are coming to be religion Christians, monthly Christians, weekly Christians, yearly Christians, you cannot handle it. Neither you can know that you have such sort of a superhuman power treasured in your earthen vessels. But here he says in Ephesians 1, emphasizing in verse number 19, the power to us word who believe according to that energia according to that operation, how of his mighty power, the word iskun, that which has been the ability, the strength, the might, the words which have been called to use as forcibleness, how mighty power, kratos strength, a mighty deed. And every believer should be there for a mighty deed of the Lord God. How he should visibly manifest 
That's what the strength of a man of a Gabor and we have been used in Isaiah 6. Isaiah 9, we read that, isn't it? The spirit of Gabor. That's what it is. The Kratos power, the Iskun strength, the spirit of Gabor. That's what you have been called to manifest. The Iskun strength. And that's what we are looking today. <laughs> he says in verse 20, Which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his high on the right hand in the heavenly places, for above all principalities and powers, and might again dunamis and dominion, again the word called to be a curiotes, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come, that is what we are going to have. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness, again the word pleroma, of him which filleth all in all. You know, there is nothing to be worried. You have been given the superhuman power in you. Manifest that great superhuman power in the Lord God. So he said, the commandment of the word of Lord God is your life, is your lamp, and it is the light. So the next word, what we need to look is the light. So here, dear brethren, according to that power which operates, which energia, which goes on in you, it makes you to be having the strength like a superhuman. So he said now, the law is light in Proverbs 6.23. The word light over here, dear brethren, in the pictographical representation, it is called to give your body that bull kind of a strength so that no matter what, you still continue to carry the burden of the Lord. Yoke with such burden. Therefore, Christ the Lord of our God says in Matthew 11, come and carry my yoke. Come and carry my burden. It's easy. It's light. The same thing. The word over here for light, ore in the Hebrew, meant to say your body has been so much strengthened, not only in your vigor, not only in your power of your thoughts of semen, but also it says your body is also having such an aleph energy. Having to be in you, the cherubim level of a lion, the cherubim level of a thinking like the bull, having a vision like an eagle. So you have something great now. That's the light, ore. The lamp, ne'er. Now you have the light, ore. You put all the things into their proper order. Set right the things. First to set right your own life as per to carry no matter what. First priority to the word of Lord God. That's how you set right. That's how you put. That's how you get back. All the things you put as per such demands. So he says, the word of Lord God is the lamp, and the word of Lord God is the light. And then it is the word reproof. The word reproofs over here, dear brother, one meant to say, tokeka. The word tokeka is nothing but the impeachments, the arguments, and followed by the corrections. So how are you going to get it? Only as a scribe, it says in the pictographical representation. Only as a scribe you put upon such great wall of fortification. So the reproofs of the instructions, such as what, when you build up your life like a scribe, that is the real way. That's the word direct. Meant to say you get every thought into captivity for Christ now, using your head to be like a scribe, and that's what it will become, the true meaning of your life. The reproof, to keka. To make up your body, to be like a scribe, to build up your wall of fortification, nothing but to become like a scribe. That's what I've been kept alive. To go on and to reach the thinking like a scribe. To keka. That's what I've been called now, to be reaching your thinking like a scribe. And that is what he says, that is the way of life. And that great way of life, what we can look over here, emphasizes your thought process, your head, to be thinking like a scribe. And yet, dear brethren, today, 
Many people are not able to become what has been demanded for us to be in the Bible. They don't know what is the lamp energy. They don't know what is the light energy. They don't know the energy energy which operates in them. Superhuman power. They're still able to give alibis, excuses and reasons because alibis and excuses and reasons are their own brainchild imaginations. They can defend it. So they come to give that. They're so happy to give that. And they simply continue to give that with all reasons they give. <laughs> and yet, dear brethren, people are happy to give alibis and excuses and not able to make up disciples, not able to carry their cross, not able to tell them the truth, not able to direct them as per the demands of the word of Lord God at all. They're just happy to do so. And yet, dear brethren, how many does more we want to be in that life? The life without lamp, the life without light, the light, the life without reproof, and the life without having the way of life to be taught. The life which doesn't have the superhuman power. Many souls are perishing without knowing these things. Teach them. Because time is too short for us to end it up in vanity. Each and every breath what you breathe, it has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. And tomorrow the greater you reject to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The greater you are having a life being operated by the human energy. But you don't have the next power option called to be the superhuman energy. To be operating in you to the praise of His glory. That great superhuman energy which is lacking in our pulpits today. And that's what every believer has been called. And every believer has been entitled to live such a life. Superhuman energy orientation to the world of Lord God. So that that could be the vigor and valor of your lamp. And that could be the vigor and valor of your light. And that could be the only instruction, coage, which can guide. And that could be your tokeka. Building up that wall of fortification to learn nothing but the word of truth. And at how many days more, dear brother, and you want to live a life that which is not pleasing to God the Father, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow. In the vigorous strength of Lord God the Father in heaven, to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine. Glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The with you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the past two teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season, out of sin, because the amount of my witnesses where it have been called. The number one amount of my witnesses in the infinity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two amount of my witnesses for hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. As Jeremiah says in chapter 21 in verse number 8, And unto the people you shall say, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I have set or given before you the way of life and the way of death. Every time God the Father talks to us to teach, 
the difference between the way of life and the way of death. The way of life which is your eternity, the way of death which you are been living right now. Getting baptized for your marriages rather than to be a martyr to the word of God. Living your life for a monthly menial wage rather than living your life for eternal wages, forever to be in the presence of God the Father, to be good and faithful steward in doing his marvelous work. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a marvelous wonder it is, O Lord, to, re to, to redeem that time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and to become the pale wonders of your glory in teaching the truth. What else do we require on this earth, O Lord, than to rightly divide the word of Lord God the Father, and to rightly teach your word to all these people, because tomorrow when we come back, O Lord, we have to be that faithful stewards, good and faithful one, who have been faithful to the word of God against any odd circumstances of this life, rather than becoming to be unfaithful stewards by wrongly dividing the word of truth. So, Father, being thankful for this great superhuman power which you have taught for us in Energia of Ephesians 1, we pray that same superhuman power of Lord God the Holy Ghost to operate in us in going on and making disciples of all the nations rather than worrying and crying and weeping and wailing for the sicknesses or for all alibis and reasons and excuses which have been put forth not to know the lamp, not to know the light, not to know even the, the reproofs of the great instructions of your life. So, Father, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message, so that we could operate in the superhuman energy of, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath, to the praise of your glory, and redeeming each and every breath and every second of our life, to get to fill this earth with the great glory and the knowledge of the word of, Lord God, which you have promised and said, As I live, the earth shall be filled with the glory of, Lord God, the Father. So, Father, help us to be the ministers of that. Help us to inculcate that help us to constantly enjoy that ministry of power in your grace and to give you maximum glory that which is due unto your name before the foundation of the world in christ matchless pure as gracious name we pray father the lord god the holy ghost and let him challenge us by this message in christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen